the hardest thing for me to be quiet. Uh, all right, so um, my name is Bart. I uh, work at Design Engine. Um, I put my email address up at the top of, uh, of the screen that I'm going to share in a moment so you can see it. Um, so my, my talk today is, is uh, of course, surfacing. And uh, I, you know, I went to uh, Walmart yesterday and bought this. I put some under my eye, and I can't tell you how nice it feels. Um, oil of Olay. Uh, so, you know, sculpted forms help sell the product. You know, so um, I just thought it was kind of an interesting design. So uh, we add it. We add things to our Learn to Design course as we uh, as we think about ultimately what what's new in our classes that we want to, what, that we want to do. So um, I, I can share two separate windows. I've got my other Wacom tablet, my uh, Wacom tablet here next to me, so you can kind of see. I was just going to draw out my thoughts on how I would approach this model. Um, you can see um, my second screen. Can everybody see that uh, I drew an X on the screen? Yes. Yep. So, um, so I've, I've got an oil of Olay, and I can tell you, Creos has really done a good job. PTC folks have done a really cool job getting their surfaces really dialed in. Um, the more I explore Creo Nine, the more excited I am about you know teaching people surfacing like an evangelist. I just can't stop talking about this stuff, right? So, um, what 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 uh, one one of the things that makes Design Engine a modeling workflow kind of interesting is we build everything with a box. So the joke is we're so far outside of the box, maybe we need a box, you know. Um, so here's here's my uh, box. And of course, if I'm going to do a revolve, right, maybe maybe I would put some kind of arc inside of here so it could do, do a revolve. Now, the typical BSME workflow is less features is better. So one of the one of the things that uh, Design Engine does that that might irritate folks just a little bit in the beginning is that we want you to use more features than less. So here, um, let's think about the feature number count that we're going to throw down. I'm going to build a legitimate box on a datum plane. So that would be you know the first four features would be coordinates, you know, coordinate system would be four, datum plane, datum plane, datum plane, coordinate system. So my first sketch would be feature number five, and this sketch would be feature number six. So if we're, if we're counting, counting features, you, you know, and, and you find that less features is better, you're going to find this workflow rather uh, annoying. Um, let's build another uh, sketch that, that develops the, the lower half. And if the center of this thing is oriented and aligned, coincidentally constrained to the datum plane, then it's going to be tangent to itself when it's mirrored. Um, you know, I've, I've spent 20 years putting together a a, a, an intense plastics uh, workshop, you know, and uh, um, in, a, in a hot runner type mold, that, that would be a, a little pin gate right there. So maybe it would look something like that and it wouldn't quite be tangent but uh anyway so there's a there's a there's an arc at the bottom and then design engine we've got a word that we that that some some of the terms that we make up we call this when i'm getting ready to draw a, a an eighth an eighth curve we call it the culmination curve it looks at all the other curves so if you're counting features you're going to find this terribly annoying right so let's uh, let's just do that now. Let's count features five, six, uh, seven. The red one is eight, and uh, so uh, PTC has has not given us the ability to do some really intense G three continuity inside Creo Sketcher mode. So what I might do if I want G three continuity at this bottom, and it's all about workflow. It, it, since they won't let us do do uh, style inside. Creo sketcher mode, I'll just delete that and do it in style. 
and I can do my G3 continuity all I want. So what I, what I want to do is think about how I want to dimension this stuff. Notice I haven't even started modeling yet. Everything I'm doing is thinking about it. This is what BSMEs tend to forget to do. They'll go in Creo, spend 10 hours, give up, start again. 100 hours later, they still can't look their manager in the eye with any confidence and tell them how long it's going to take. So what I've got here is if I, if I end up deleting this radius, I'm just going to use my eraser to kind of pull it out of there. And I'm going to build that with a style curve. Let's just do it with green and make it G3 at the top and maybe G2 or G1 at the bottom. You know, it's going to look uh, very, very different at the bottom of this uh, at, at the bottom of this oil of the lake uh, jug. All right, let's let's keep thinking through stuff. So may, maybe we do that when we're all done. If we got time, the G3 continuity at the bottom. Let's think about what else we got. All right. So when design engine trains up industrial designers, <clears throat> we, we try to get them to think about uh, working more intelligently with the team effectively with the team. And the engineers will just want to remodel it if you put datum planes in any kind of awkward place. So here I put a datum plane down this section to, to delineate between the jar and the lid. So maybe maybe the lid has draft where it needs to buckle backwards going the other way. So by drawing it first, I get to think about all this stuff, which is ex extremely health, uh, healthy to think through. Now, if you look at that chamfer at the top, He's coming in at a very weird angle. You see that? But I think the top is flat. I've got this jar in front of me here. I spent $26 on it okay. <laughs> last night, so I'd have something to look at. The top is totally flat. So he's, he, you know, I'm, I'm trying to draw this as if it's the plan view. Th this is the ellipse at the top. Now, typically, I wouldn't put an ellipse into a production model, and I always found it terribly annoying that SolidWorks that's all they had was the ellipse. They didn't have four conics that you could glue together and change the, the row value of the conics. So I would probably error on in a production model, putting four conics. So um, in front of marketing, we could change the row value of all four of those conics. I'm probably just gonna go with it as, a, as a, um, an ellipse. But uh, so, so he's gonna be on there as an ellipse, right? I'm just trying to draw it in 2D. And then um, the, depending on how big the ellipse is, is how big, how big the uh, chamfer is going to be for that thing, you know? So I, I think I've got a pretty good plan on how to build this. Now, uh, when I build stuff, I'm going to make it so ridiculously robust that it's easy to modify. And I think that's something that, uh, that takes a little bit of practice. So if you've got a young person on your team and you want to kind of uh, see, see what we can do for them, send them to, uh, to, to a learn to design course and then possibly a plastics week and then possibly a surfacing week, you know, and, and uh, if, if you can, if you can do away with them like that with us, we'll send them back extra, extraordinarily competent. So I'm going to switch my, uh, my screen now back to uh, my Creo window and I'm going to try to implement this uh, sort of think map that I built. I didn't quite finish counting through the numbers, but I think you, uh, for, for sake of time, I think you know where I'm going with it. So here I've got uh, Creo 9. Finally, they, they've got the, 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 um, the, the, the feature numbers by default. You know, I, I just installed this out of the box. I didn't change anything. But uh, I think most systems admin folks would set your feature numbers up, even in assembly mode. Um, have, if you've used SolidWorks, if you get like anything complicated above 500 to 1200 features, they don't have feature numbers in there. I don't know how they get away with that. I, I think SolidWorks users just don't know what they're missing. Um, so here, I'm gonna build my box, my oil of Olay. Size is really irrelevant for us uh, because we, we're, it, it, we, we're gonna model it so easily to modify. Here's something new in Creo 9. If, uh, if my, uh, if my oil of LA is, look, it just automatically changed everything. I, I, I changed it to two, which is going to be a four inch box. I'm going to delete that two because I want it to be uh, reminiscent of um, a diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and change my box uh, like you would know how to do. Left click, left click, middle click, you know, left click, left click, left click, middle click to get a diameter. 
Um, and it's probably about two or three tall. But this is irrelevant to me. Size is irrelevant because it's so easy to change after after you build the model. All right. So now um, my think map had a couple other sketches that I'm going to throw down. So let's uh, let's build an arc from the top to the bottom. And one of the things that make with our with I don't know about PTC's version of these classes, but what what we try to tell people is if you give me a good attitude, I can make you 30 percent faster using all the tools that are new since Wildfire 2. And a lot of us don't use all the tools that, that were new in Wildfire 2. So our our uh, update training might might show you stuff that's new in Creo 6, 7, 8, 9, but we're still looking at stuff that was new in Wildfire 2 that you're probably not leveraging. So there, that's that's a curve. Now I'm going to do another one going all the way to the top. All right. So um maybe uh maybe we maybe what we do is we define a datum plane where where the lid gets delineated from 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 the uh from the jar itself. Right. I didn't put that in my think map, but I did draw it as green. Yeah. Then uh, maybe maybe uh, the next curve would be um, this thing coming down, you know, and depending on how the plastic is pulled uh, out of the, the hot runner and how many cavities, I, I would think, you know, that that's how I'm going to orient my my draft. Right. So and look, I, I, I teach a pretty mean gd and t class but but here i'm or organizing all my geometry to the box which breaks all the gd and t kind of asme 14.5 dimensioning schema and notice i never hardly look straight down upon my sketch what i'm looking at is how high up the center of my arc is above the parting line which is how i determine what the draft angle is at the top but I'm going to control the draft angle with a legitimate handle. Right hold down, reach for um, uh, construction, and then um, I'll, I'll organize my draft with with a theta. Right, look, it's not tied yet. That's one of the things that that's really cool about Creo is I can get all those assumptions to occur at a high level. Here now I've got. The, the control, you know, I grew up racing motocross. So, you know, uh, if you fall, you got to put a brand new pair of handlebars on or you bend them back. And this is my crowbar uh, to bend things back. So here I'm, I'm guaranteeing that I've got two degrees draft at the top. Can I tell you people don't do that? Uh, the little tricks that we throw into our week long plastic part or die casting courses, manufacturing courses. Uh, I, I just encourage you to make a coffee and look at some of that stuff. So here's here's the top of my lid. You know, he's he's probably got some kind of draft. And do you see how high up the center of my of my uh my arc is? That's because I haven't organized my draft yet. So when I'm first building these, I'll organize my draft. Let me delete this handle and I'm just going to get that 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 crowbar to occur through an assumption. You can make assumptions like that in SOLIDWORKS, but man, they just work so nicely in Creo. I'm, I sound like uh, I'm selling it. You know, we don't sell software, but uh, um, I'm always be selling. All right. So there's that. And uh, so when I check out of it, a lot of people feel compelled to edit definition to change it. Just drag it. If you if you don't care what the number is just yet, because you don't know what it needs to be, all these things are flexible and modifiable relative to what you've got. And if they're not, fix it so it is. This is a very design engine methodology. All right, so I look at the clock, it's uh, 18 after. Let's see, um, I haven't even built a sweep yet or a revolt. Let's see, what else do I got? I gotta define the angle of, of, the, uh, of the Olay jug. It's got, it's got the, the lid's got a slant through it. So I'm gonna kind of organize that. I might just uh, build it as a as a as a sketch. Um, I don't know if it needs to be right down the middle or what. Uh, but uh, um, how do you want to control that slant? That's that's what I'm thinking about. Let's see. 
I'm going to dimension it from here to here. I use a lot of relations in my models, but not usually while I'm building it. Um, maybe I'll just make it symmetric here. Symmetry tool. By the way, see how I have the center line in here? You don't have to uh, use that in Creo 7 and 8 and 9 anymore. It'll let you uh, force, you know, symmetry in all kinds of different ways now. Looks like I, I hit too many middle clicks on my butt buttons. Okay, well, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm just going to leave it like that and not, uh, not try to organize myself too well there. All right, so I got it dimensioned at the top on one side. And so I'm just going to extrude a surface out of that. And then I can sketch on a surface like that. Uh, you know, a lot of people find that really irritating when they see the model. Um, so what I do is I color that surface a slightly different color so it can leave a sort of breadcrumb trail uh, behind. Um, I'm, I'm just going to ratchet in a little bit of transparency to that red. I'll, uh, I'll use the generic and then about 70%. That way, that way other people on the model know that that's not a legitimate part of my model. It's, it's just a tool. Um, I would never offset a datum plane. A lot of people offset datum planes. It just gets so uh, clumsy and cumbersome. So what I'll do is I'll put a datum plane through the top of that arc, that, that's, that box, and tell it to be parallel to something. That's a very design engine centric thing to do. The counter end is gonna find that annoying because you could have just offset a datum plane and it's one feature here, I've got a box to control it. Anytime I change the box, the datum plane goes with. That's where I'm gonna put my ellipse. And I, I did mention that I wouldn't use an ellipse in a production model, and it's probably because that's all SolidWorks could do for so many years. SolidWorks finally got a uh, an ellipse tool, and uh, 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 where you could put four conics together and control all that with the with the row values. Um, to me, that's legitimately 20, 20 years too late. All right, so there's my uh, there's my ellipse, and uh, I don't know about how big it needs to be, but we'll organize that next. What else do I got to do? Oh, let's build the culmination curve and just do a revolve. And then this surface, if I split it all up using top-down design, this surface is going to be my delineation surface, and I would I would publish that geometry, you know, so that the smart intern could could uh, could access it. Um, and because I want not to have to merge that together, I'm, I'm uh, you know, when I when I when I get it to, to through top down design, I'm thinking out loud here, but maybe I want to uh, see I reorder it to see which feature it's tied to. Maybe what I'd like to do is make this thing um, all the way across. So um, I'm going to build symmetry without the center line. So if my box gets wider, it's going to get wider over there too. All right now, um, you know, I, I like to keep all my surfaces towards the end. Why? Because I like to go to insert mode before they exist. So I don't have to hide them just faster. Now I'm going to build my culmination curve. If we have time, I'll build, I'm going to do some G3 continuity to the curves. All right. So in Creo 9, you have to hold the control key down to uh, add, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, do projection. You know, maybe I could consider putting this one on as a separate entity. But what, what I'm going to do is use the fillet tool. Do you know the difference between these two fillets? The top one puts that sort of point. Maybe that's for detailers and what have you. Um, I'm just going to use the bottom one because I don't feel like deleting anything. But uh, if what I, what I would do is probably put a conic inside of here, or use a style curve. So what 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 I'm going to do is drop a uh, a point on here. Does everybody know the difference between this point and this point? This point shows up outside of the sketch. This one gets consumed inside the sketch. 
So let's, let's throw down a comic on here. Um, these two are kind of pointless because they don't have uh, the row value accessibility. So what you want to do is this one here. Oh. Um, so what I'm trying to do is get, get tangency to occur uh, by default over there. Um, this, this, I was trying to get the assumption to occur. Uh, this is called the angle of attack of a wing. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to try to evoke tangency across here. I just kind of gave up trying to get the uh, the assumptions to occur. But look how it's dimensioned. That's not when I stretch these geometries. That's not going to stretch too well. So what I'm going to do is be creative about how I organize my dimensions and consider dimensioning them to uh, a point. Um, I'm teaching a surfacing class this week, and. Uh, um, we haven't quite gotten to this in the class yet, but it's really cool. So uh, let's see. Let's revolve that culmination curve now. And uh, um, what's new in Wildfire 2 is you can revolve around anything. You don't have to. Uh, I said Wildfire 2, not Creo 2. Wildfire 2, you don't have to revolve around the axis. And you could, if you wanted to, you could right click and grab the um, coordinate system. By the way, look at that coordinate system. You see how it's green, red, and blue? Every software package for the last 20 years, their coordinate system is red, green, and blue. R, G, B, X, Y, Z. So at a glance, you know which way is X, Z, and Y. Because it's green is always Y. I'm just going to right click and revolve around the Y. And now let's look at the rocket exhaust. I like to make fun of uh, rocket, you know, Elon's rocket exhaust. So here, this thing, this thing's looking very clean as it, as it, as it, uh, as, if you really wanted to hyper focus on the specular highlight, it's kind of getting a little chunky down at the bottom. If I change some of these things, I'm going to change the, the way the, uh, the geometry organizes itself and give myself a lot more berth for the specular highlight to rock and roll. Look how I can change all this stuff dynamically. So if you read our surfacing landing page to take the week long surfacing class, it says learn how to design in the light reflection. That's what I'm doing, pointing out the light reflection and learning how to kind of uh, manipulate those geometries. It puts you in a whole different category and that's how we vote. We vote, well, I'm not talking about politically vote, I'm talking about voting at Target. I want this product or that tar product. My credit card gets to gets to choose one or the other. If we can get them, the consumer to evoke their emotions and purchase this one because the jar looks cool, then you've won, won the battle. It's a, it's a psychological game, even probably even in politics. But um, so there's my, there's my bottom. It looks a little different than the, than the jar I've got, but uh, you know, it's, it's a class here. I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there. All right, so I'm looking at the clock. It's uh, almost the bottom of the hour. Let's uh, let's resume these uh, these other surfaces and think about how we're going to roll. I've already Mark, got I've already got this one. Um, Mark, so I'm going to go to insert. Okay. What's that, Sorry, Deborah? This is this is Deb. Sorry, there was just a um, thing in the chat asking about the design engine class. Is there a link for the class? Um, people could kind of. I just go to designengine.com. Yeah. There's there's a uh, um, you got to kind of explore a little bit, you know, I, I'd make a cup of coffee before you go on there because there's a bunch of stuff to look at. Um, you might blow an hour. Um, Thanks. A, a lot of Emmys, they'll, they'll put an arc on the geometry to build a, uh, a scallop out. If you, if you have the jar in front of you, this, this lid's kind of scalloped out. That's a feature we did a lot at Motorola in the 90s. Um, and uh, so the majority of Emmys that build these sort of scalloped out functions, they're going to use a three point arc and, and parametrically adjust it. Um, you know, I'm going to right click and grab the uh, the 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 pole of that of that geometry. Um, I, I call so uh, one of the things that's uh, the basics design engine basics of surfacing is probably very different than than what other people might think of basics is surfacing. Um, if I right click on this on a circle or an ellipse, notice how it, it shows the hemispheres of the curves. 
SolidWorks did away with that, and I'm not so sure that's such a good thing because to be a technical surfacer, you need to be able to see all those details, and SolidWorks tends to hide all the good stuff. It gives you a feeling that the software is functional, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. It hides all the good stuff. So what, what I can do to build a boundary blend across here is right click, left click to get one half of the ellipse, left click, and then right click, left click, and look, I just built a scallop. There's probably eight, 10 different ways to do that. And alias, we'd revolve, a, uh, we'd revolve or, or use a, a primitive of a sphere and morph the sphere and use that. Another way to build these, I, I'm, I should just leave this for sake of time, but uh, another way to build these is to, is to sweep an arc across the geometry. Um, I'll just leave it for now for sake of time. Let's, uh, let's resume and see where we're at. Okay, so now what I got to do is trim the top of this thing with the red surface, and then I'm kind of done, you know? So I'll right click, left click, and I'm going to reach for the trim tool and then pick the surface as a trimming object. I'm going to hit the middle button to show you that you can go uh, one way or the other with it. I'm just going to edit definition on the trim and click the arrow. Now I'm going to hide that surface because I don't really need to see that red surface. And look, now I've got that cool chamfer on there. Now, what, what I teach people to do is to hide the, uh, the, the, the ellipse up here. Um, hide the projected curves or, or the sketches. And, um, you know, you got to be mindful of what you grab. A technical surfacer knows exactly what they, add or what they use to build the boundary even a year from now. If you ask me, I say, no, I didn't use the curve. I used the edge of the surface. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to build my chamfer using a shift key. Oh, do you see how my poles are crooked? That's not going to work. So I revolve the bottom and my poles are here, but my poles on, on, on the ellipse are, are skewed. So you probably know this, you can rotate and mirror inside of sketcher mode. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the poles in sketcher mode. I would probably say most people that work at PTC probably wouldn't know you could do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my model. First, what I wanna do is show you that you can rotate in sketcher mode. I'm just gonna model a quick star here, you know, and now that star could be really hard to, to rotate. If I click on the thing, you can hit Control X, Control V, and paste it, and then use this utility to rotate. Or you just make you you highlight the whole thing and you go straight to rotate. Look, you got the same utility. Uh, I found people don't really know what Control C, Control V, Control X, Control H, Control Y, Control uh, um, F. You know. Microsoft industry standard stuff. Anyway, rotating won't work to rotate the poles. Right? Let me uh, let me uh, show you what I'm talking about. A circle has poles to it. This this one uh, had the poles are uh, to rotate the poles. I'll I'll just uh, come up here to my window, sketch setup, and I'll just tell it, hey, instead of right, this would be a 90 degree rotate. I'm going to do a hundred. Let's see, let's do it. Yeah, this would be 180 degree rotate. This would be a 90 degree rotate. It changed the sketch plane, but it also rotated the poles. Let's see if that worked, All right? So I don't quite remember where it was, but I think we're good now. So this is, this is technical surfacing that I'm throwing down here. To be a, I don't know if you know anybody that's a surface modeler, but they tend to make a lot of money and they, uh, they, they, they tend to be sought out and in big demand. They, they, uh, they don't get let go from the company and uh, they often shielded, the contractors are shielded from having a phone because the headhunters will call them and pull them out. My sales pitch. <laughs> uh, let's, let's now see if we can, oh, my poles are still rotated. I didn't rotate the poles effectively. Let's see. Oh. Now my surface is going the other way. That's, that's my problem. I built my surface as poles backwards. So I'm going to delete that, that curve that I built 
and kind of think through that a little bit more uh, clearly. Okay, so I rotated the poles. Um, I think I'm gonna uh, actually hit undo and get back. I wanna rotate that, that, uh, Yeah, let, let's see if I can rotate the poles of that again. I'm not sure if I succeeded. Bottom. Hmm. I might have to just build another. Let me just delete that thing and see if I can't build it the other way. Maybe I'm mistaken. Are you able to hit that flip icon and would it flip around then? Uh, well, you could break it into four quadrants if you wanted to. Okay, so now I'm mindful that I have my poles oriented the same because I don't want to have to add any extra kind of geometry. I'm not sure what you mean by flip, but uh, I did I did get the thing to succeed, succeed in, in organizing my poles. All right, now, now I wanna build the scallop down the middle. Now I used, um, I deleted all the stuff out of there. I used the, the actual sketch curve to do it. And what in our classes, we try to get people to free up from being so 12 decimal places about everything. Uh, here I'm going to use a curve through points. This tool hasn't really changed much since Chrome Engineer version seven. It's it's the same as as like 30 years ago. Um, but what what's new in Creo is all the cool tools for style. Now it's a little hard to see in Zoom here, but I've got points that I can tug and pull on. This is the classic. Um, three degree curve. A three degree curve has these, these points that you can drag around and do things to. And what I wanted to do is just kind of puff up the, uh, the entity a little bit. And uh, now, now I need to build, build the boundary blend back up over here. Right click, left click, left click. Here's the other side. So I'm holding the control key down the whole time. Right click, left click. Now I built the scallop out of there. It's a little small, but we'll, we'll manipulate him so he's a little bit bigger. I'm not sure what's failing over here. Yeah, I'm just gonna delete him. Don't, that was the, the cross curve going the other way. Uh, when I hit delete, I just uh, suppress stuff. Okay, so now let's hide its, uh, its ellipse up here. Right click through and I'm, I'm trying to right click through and grab that curve out of the graphics window. You'll see SOLIDWORKS users that always grab out of a model tree, and it's just terribly annoying. They should grab it out of the graphics window, but they probably don't know how, which is funny because they, they'll, they'll, they'll hate Creo and love SOLIDWORKS, but they don't even know SOLIDWORKS. I just find those people really annoying, especially the ones that try to get the company to quit. Design engine doesn't fit in that category. We just say you probably need to learn SOLIDWORKS better or Creo better. All right, so now let's build the boundary blend. So here's half, shift gets all the way around, control, shift gets all the way around, and look, my poles line up just right. Their chamfer's a little big, but when I, when I change the size of my lips, I, remember I hid the surface, so I drag the curve up. You know, SOLIDWORKS won't let you drag two features at once. That's hilarious. It's funny people like SOLIDWORKS better and they don't even know SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so now, now, now I should be able to uh, drag that, 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 you know, ellipse bigger. I'm not sure why it wasn't letting me uh, drag. Oh, it's like mid, midpoint. See, do you see how that, uh, that, that icon looks a little bit like both of these? I, I haven't mentioned this to PTC yet, but I think they, they got this, uh, their user interface people got this wrong. Um, this one looks like uh, both of these icons. You see that? When I delete this feature, it's been this way for years, people don't even notice it. 
Now I'm going to re-evoke it and make it aligned coincident. Can you, can you see that icon? I'm going to draw it. Which one of those is that one? Which one of these is that one? I know it's the bottom one, but that to me is user interface violation. I shouldn't knock PTC too hard. Their, their software is pretty awesome. I just find that little things like that can be, really irritate people when they're learning um, a CAD tool. All right, so now I've got it kind of freed up. Look how dynamic that is. Can you imagine making changes in front of marketing? Let marketing play too. They want to enjoy the game. <laughs> All right, so here I'm I'm doing this in front of my manager. I've got I've got the chamfer I need to organize. I'm 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 rotating the model around so it looks looks like my my picture. Um, and uh, I can I can make my uh, my 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 ellipse kind of do whatever I want. And real time feedback like that is pretty awesome. That's that's what you need in order to be able to design in the light reflection. You got to be able to make these real time changes dynamically, or pick a different tool. So maybe the ellipse isn't quite centered. I don't know, but. Uh, if if you built the center of the of of this geometry like I did, moving it to the set, moving it out of center won't fail, right? So um, we got uh, 20, uh, 15 minutes left. So I think I pretty much got the jar. Well, this is this is the start of my top down design workflow. Um, I teach a lot of top down design workshops, and usually it's after we do the project. And then they're like, oh my gosh, we want to be able to manage this project. How do we do the top-down design stuff? So I'll teach a one-week class just to show how, how the model was built so they're comfortable managing all the ECNs. All right, so I'm going to build an assembly and I'm going to call it o Olay 901 for lack of a better word, nine meaning Creo 9. And then I'm going to go and create a, uh, a skeleton file. Um, this technique that I'm going to show you is the workflow for the teamed approach to managing top-down design. And usually the team is me, myself, and I, but when my manager wants me to work with other people on their team, I need to be kind of thinking about how I can set them up to be easy. So this, this is where I browse to grab that model out of memory that I just built. This one I think is it. You can use preview. SOLIDWORKS won't let you rotate in preview. That's hilarious. <laughs> give, give knocking SOLIDWORKS too hard today. So if there were solids in this skeleton file, this, this uh, notice icon looks very different. Uh, this icon um, won't weigh up my mass properties or count up in my bill of material. And, and this part doesn't go to the, to the mold shop for quotation. You know, it, it's it's a uh, it's it's a it's a driver. It drives everything else. All right. So let, let's create the uh, uh, upper housing and lower housing. Um, I'm just going to call it the same naming convention 901 underscore 001 for uh, for uh, for lid. And uh, here I'm going to grab my uh, millimeter inch part, whatever. And and here this is new in wildfire two. right. Hold down default constraint. If I. Sometimes I get people with 25, 30,000 hours on Creo and they're aligning datum planes up. I'm like, no, 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 stop, back up. <laughs> so uh, let's act. Uh, now, I haven't published anything out of here. Let's, uh, um, let, let's do that real quick. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, I'm just going to publish the jar. Um, maybe what I want to do is kind of merge all this stuff together. I'm going to merge all three surfaces together as one feature. High-end surface modelers wouldn't do that because stuff chokes and it's harder to manage fail mode. They would merge everything in one feature, two, two things in one feature, and then that whole thing to one feature. And uh, I'll argue with the best of them. It's smarter to, to merge one at a time. And uh, the merge that does everything together is a join and it's less accurate. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's now publish that Quilt. So here's how here's how I SolidWorks calls them surface bodies. I'm going to right click and grab the quilt and publish that information out. Now this seems complicated, 
but this is how I, uh, this is how, this is how we work with the smart intern manager wants me to work as a team. So I'm going to call this uh, uh, jar and I tend to put underscore pub. Um, I didn't put a P on the end of that. B. All right. So um, now, uh, now uh, I, I, the other thing I'm going to publish is the delineation between lid and, and, uh, and jar. So this, this is how we get Harley Davidson and all these uh, John Deere and Caterpillar, all these guys. This is, this is the way you want to roll as a team. Uh, so um, segregation, I don't use that word uh, that was hijacked in the 60s. We want to use the word delineation. Yep. And what I'm trying to do is come up with a vocabulary that's easy for the smart intern that may not have had this class to figure out what to do. Right. Now would be a good time to say it. Um, I didn't. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to go and activate this part. And I'm going to go out and fetch what I need. Copy geometry. Now, now we're the smart intern hat. All right. I know I need published geometry. I'm going to open up the uh, Olay bottle and nice, nice and neatly tucked into the footer is my jar pub. Middle click. Um, while I'm here, why don't we just solidify the thing? And then I'm going to reach out and grab the other delineation geometry. Middle click. And then I'm simple minded. I like. Uh, PTC made control A activate the window. Control A is supposed to select all. That they they made that mistake at Creo 3 and they never went back to fix it because everybody got used to control A being activate a window. But everybody that knows Microsoft Industry Standard knows control A is selecting all. PTC doubles down, doubles down like that. All right. I, I, I before I would turn this into the customer, I would organize these ECECGs to be named properly. Let's call this one uh, um, in, in entire part uh, ECG or whatever. Uh, and the bottom one was the delineation um, ECG. I'm typing fast here. Um, so uh, it's solidified already. So I should be able to use this surface to cut with. Now I'm on the lid. Do I want the lid to be a little bit smaller than the jar? Or do I want the jar to be a little bit smaller than the lid? That's up to you. I'm just going to offset this surface. The distance that I want uh, the offset to be, you know, how, how much smaller is the lid? And I'll use that resultant surface to 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 uh, to make a cut. I'm just going to remove it so that I have the legitimate lid. OK, that's that's the part that I'm going to shell. Okay, so now uh, let, let's go and do, I'm going to go back to my assembly. Um, I like to hide the skeleton. It's not really necessary to see it because everything that's in, that's needed is embedded inside of the published geometry. And can I tell you this published geometry is money. If you get good at managing top-down design, you're the best one at the company and you get all the cool projects. I put that out there in the universe. All right, let's create the uh, uh, Olay uh, 901 underscore 002 uh, jar. So uh, right hold down, default constraint, middle click, activate that part. And uh, now I got to go and do all that stuff over again. If you wanted to, you could make a copy of the lid and save it out as the jar and reverse that last, you know, play, play with that last cut. But, you know, we, we like to do it again. Uh, here's the jar, middle click. While it's uh, highlight, uh, highlighted, hit the solidify button. So I think PTC has done a wonderful job at setting us up to kind of do the next thing in line. Um, I'm going to hit the control A, um, open up that uh, that jar and uh, now I'm going to use uh, I'm not going to offset this surface I'm just going to use that surface as a cutting object I'll solidify in a cut direction and that's the jar let's uh let's you know it, it, it probably you know if you open it up look at it it looks a little bit different you know it's got the uh, it's got you know um, it's definitely not glass I've added added uh, all these to my plastics class. Um, it it it. Uh, I'm going to drag the round a little bit. I'm probably going to put a conic round on this geometry 
or better yet, it, uh, PTC mistakenly calls this a C2 continuous. It's a G2. The man's name was Gauss, not curvature continuous is the wrong vocabulary. All right, so we're going to um, we're going to put a uh, uh, D1, D2 conic. This is kind of faking a little bit, but I'm going to put a 0.6 on that. And what that does is it changes the specular highlight in a very different kind of way here. And uh, sometimes that makes it a little harder to shell the geometry, but uh, not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, build, um, maybe that could be another talk that uh, I do, how to shell anything. Um, we used to do all the all the uh, wicked shelling for SRAM years ago, the grip shift folks. Um, okay, and now uh, let's shell that geometry here. Um, um, I, I'm gonna make it kind of small for now just to be done with it. Um, all right, so that, uh, that should give me um, everything I need at the assembly level or for the oil, uh, the jar itself, I might want to go back and add rounds. This is this is kind of a really good testament to. Uh, let's let's color some stuff here. My my jar is uh, clear, but I'm just going to color the bottom one white, and the top one is silver. So I'll color. Uh, I'll co I'll just pick one of the the PTC standard colors. Creo eight nine shades the datum planes like SolidWorks. I think that's a little annoying because sometimes you don't know if you've got your mirror just right. So I, I tend to turn those off. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is make some changes to the model. This is how you get hooked. That top-down design is the way to roll. A lot of people, they, they are like, no, top-down design doesn't work for our products. And people get kind of emotional about some of these things. And I don't think that's the right way to do. Um, uh, top-down design is appropriate for pretty much everything. So here, I'm, I'm just gonna, uh, change a few things in my model. Let's make it, uh, let's make it taller, right? Let's see, uh, let's, let's, make, let's make the bottom a little deeper or a little smaller, right? Um, let's, let's change the delineation for the lid. Look how ridiculously robust this is. You know, it's not terribly hard to get SOLIDWORKS to work like this too. It's just PTC has got it really dialed. The way, the way you can drag these things around. And if I wanted to change the draft angle to make it more closely straight up and down, you could just, you know, depending on what your texture is, you could just type in the number. Let's, let's add some G2 rounds to the top. And the cool part, Everything just publishes out, All right? So I've got, um, let's, let's, um, this one, I like to use the chordal round. Has anybody played with this one? One, <laughs> one hint, uh, the SolidWorks version of this is quite finicky. This, have you ever tried to get a five millimeter round to go on and it won't work? Three works, five won't, the chordal five works. It's, I don't know what they did to this tool, but it's pretty dope. Um, so chordal basically is is the, the the chord length, and that's how it controls the radius. Um, and I'm going to do a C2 uh, continuous version of the chord chord round. I don't know if SolidWorks does that. This is pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm going to make the row value just a little pointy. Um, 0.6. What that does is it changes all how the light reflects. And it uh, psychologically for like a defibrillator, you could you could get that product to look smaller than it really is. So it's less intimidating when you when you when you uh, you know you have to do that surgery and the doctor shows you that geometry the day before the surgery. It's can be kind of scary. Um, I'll make this one coroidal and uh, C G two continuous. Don't call it C two. That sounds dumb. Call it G two. All right, and uh, now uh, nothing should fail when I update the assembly, you know? All those rounds just up. This is how you wanna learn top-down design. Um, you know, and uh, 
So if I, if I had a little bit more time, I'd show you how to get that G2 continuity at the bottom. I don't know if you want to see that. I got three minutes. Um, but uh, the, the, you know, the, the, I think I'm pretty much done. But any change you make, you know, you should be flexible. This is, this is how all these uh, jar manufacturers should be. And you know what? They're not. So any change I make, here's something new. You can, you can uh, oh, I'm in the assembly, so it won't let me drag. Um, I, uh, so I, I like to go back to the skeleton file and make those changes. Let's do something kind of ridiculous. You know, is that going to fail? You know, better not. Maybe, maybe a shell would fail or something, you know. All right. So uh, any questions? I was going to um, share my, uh, my email address. You know, if, if you want the model, you need to send me an email. I'll send it to you. You know, uh, one way you can get your systems administrator to install Creo 9 for you so you can be the champion at work and not kind of learn all the cool new stuff before everybody else is to just promise you won't upload anything to Windchill, you know, overwrite stuff. Um, usually that's all they need to hear and they'll, they'll let you have Creo 9. Uh, Deb, do you, do you have any uh, uh, chat? I got 20 questions. SolidWorks hate, that's funny. Yeah, I, I teach a pretty mean SolidWorks surfacing class. I just, uh, it, it's a challenge, you know. Nice wallpaper. <laughs> Did I lose the audio? Not Hello? here. Not here. Testing? Okay. I'm just reading some of these. Yeah. Uh, somebody posted the link to our training. If anybody's got a quick question, otherwise we'll probably shut it down in a, in a minute or two. Just go yeah. ahead and mute yourself. All right. Well, if you're halfway curious, I wouldn't mind uh, just showing some of the training material we have question. Uh, organized for our classes. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm a new SolidWorks um, or Creo user. Um, I'm switching from SolidWorks to Creo. And uh, I've been, I learned a lot of like advanced surface modeling, literally watching Creo tutorials and a lot of engineering um, videos. Um, I'm an industrial designer and uh, oh. I'm trying to figure out, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the best way to take advantage of uh, Creo is because it's way different from SolidWorks. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, design engine is kind of our, like in our mission statement is to help industrial designers embrace these tools. And uh, um, we, have, we have some classes that are very geared at industrial designers. And we have a seven day class. If you, if, you're, if you know Alias or Rhino, we can get you up to speed real quick. Better to take the two week version, but uh, um, you know, uh, even PTC, I think has some of these classes, but everybody knows SolidWorks, right? So we have a class, if you know SolidWorks, Let's learn Creo. At the end of the week, you should be at the same level at the end of our week in, in Creo. And actually, we, we uh, uh, adjust attitudes to somebody asked me at a restaurant once, what do you do for a living? You know how people like to talk about themselves. And uh, I said, oh, my job is to manage attitudes. That's what I do. I get you to like Creo. Or if it's a reverse commute, I'm trying to get you to learn SolidWorks. Still working on but, that. Uh, <laughs> what's that? The SolidWorks class, but uh, and we have special classes where we don't let MEs in the class. It's all industrial designers. So um, yeah, I would love to be a part of that. By. I would love to be a part of that, and uh, I would love your email if you do have that. I, I would love to sign up for a class like that. Yep, um, I I promise to over deliver though. You know, and uh, you know, there's my email. Jot it down. Bart at designengine.com. That's spell design engine, right? Sometimes I type it too fast, you know. But have you haven't heard of design engine before being an industrial designer? We hey, I haven't on actually. Core 77 over the years, you know. Yeah, Core 77 fell out and it's now becoming, it's coming back up again. So hopefully I'll, I'll see you more around. Yeah.
Um, so we've got a pretty mean plastics class. I've been uh, kind of work, you know, I've probably spent 200 hours developing this course over the years. We discuss everything from materials to uh, compliant mechanisms, you know, um, all the different molds and materials and textures and slides and even talk about purchasing steel and how to choose the right machine, gates and runners. I've, uh, I've had a good time putting this together, laminar flow. So uh, don't think of us as just uh, the CAD company. Consider us more for uh, just learning design and engineering, you know, and we choose to use Creo, put it that way. My wife okay, took that photograph. Probably, we can probably wrap it up. It is uh, one minute to one here. Um, thanks so much, Bart, and um, keep in touch. Yep. yep. I see Mark Gel Gelco on there. Hi, Mark. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, it's nice to meet everybody. Consider Design Engine. Drink some coffee and look at the Design Engine website. Talk to you later. <laughs> thanks, Bart. Thank you. Bye, everybody. I got to go back to my class now. <laughs>